What's going on everybody? Evan here with Evan's Detailing and Polishing. If you can see the floor in front of me, we have got a heck of a mess. Um, so this um, for those of you that have been through my training course, you know that this is the infamous training tank. You spent the majority of your first day working on this thing, whether it was sanding or polishing, we were working on this. Why? Pressure and technique's important. So, I wanna start this comment off with pressure and technique are very important, okay? So, can we all agree that this tank sitting in front of me is in good shape? You've all seen this video, this tank, a lot. Like, this is our training one, we've sanded and polished this thing probably close to a thousand times. It's getting really nice. I'm gonna eventually cut this thing open so we can see how thin it is and measure it to show people how many times we've sanded areas. I have one section I've never sanded ever. We're gonna measure the thickness on that one versus the thickness on this. Thank you to Randy Bai for that. Um, he had talked about that in a video. He's from uh, Australia, I believe. And uh, he gave me the idea. I told him I was going to steal it. Him and I have talked about this. I think it's a great conversation to have because I know guys that'll sand these things every time they get them in to get those pits and dings out of the front. And just understand you're thinning that tank out every time you do it. These tanks are not made super thick, so we're gonna cut this thing open to prove it. Um, but this video has nothing to do with that. This video is this tank's in good shape. I see a lot of people ask me questions like, why are my hash marks so heavy? And I'm gonna break that down today. Um, this tank's in really good shape, so we're gonna cut it up into four different sections. Now, I'm gonna grab a piece of tape and tape down the center. Um, Reese, if you wanna grab me a skinny piece of tape, that'd be great, so I can put one down the middle here so I can break this up into four sections. Uh, but this section over here, I'm going to hit with orange and brown. In this section, I'm also gonna hit with orange and brown. And then this one over here, I'm gonna hit with yellow and brown. And this section over here, I'm gonna hit with yellow and show brown. Now, I'm gonna do the yellow and show brown section first. Why? Because if I put regular brown over the top of the show brown, the regular brown will be too heavy to get back out of the buff, and I don't want to switch the buffs just for this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to polish the show part first, and then I'm going to wreck the buff and turn it into just a regular cut buff with regular brown. So let's break these up into sections, orange and brown first, and then we will do yellow and show brown, and then on to regular and reg uh, yellow and regular brown. Now, why are we going to do that? Because I wanna show everybody that your hash marks will be less with less cut. So if you're cutting with orange and brown, you're going to have heavy marks to work out. I don't care what buffs you're using, what compounds you're using, the softer you start, the softer it finishes. So, also, I want to reiterate, if you have bought our show polish compounds, you will now understand that show polish compounds do not mean you're going to achieve a show polish from something that's nasty and rough. I get a lot of people asking all the time, they've sanded something and they polish it with show polish and they're wondering why they're not getting a show finish. As it says in the description, show polish should be used just off of really nice stuff. Now, I'm also going to color these in a couple different ways. I'm going to color this one with yellow and green. I'm gonna color this one with white and green. Now both of them that I do with, well the one that I do with yellow and regular brown, I'm gonna yellow and green this one and the one that I yellow and show brown, I'm going to white and green. Now why am I gonna do that? Softer polish, softer finish. Now since I'm using a show cut over here, I can use a softer finish to take it out. But for our everyday work trucks, we do orange and brown, white and green all day every day. Why? As soon as you run through that first truck wash and they grab that brush and they brush your tanks, it ain't gonna matter if that tank's hashless or not. You're now gonna have brush scratches. Why? Because they've been leaving that brush lay on the ground, guys have been sliding it across the floor, it's not gonna matter. So why are we shooting for hashless when as soon as you put a towel on it, it's scratched? Why would you wanna spend six hours polishing this tank to perfection without leaving any hash marks in it when as soon as you go down the road, the first fleck of dust that hits it is gonna scratch it? If you're doing it for a show, cool, I understand. But if you're doing it for everyday road trucks, why? You're just beating yourself up and you're giving your customers more than they probably want, more than they can probably see. I can tell you, I struggle seeing hashless sometimes. So, let's break it down. Orange and brown, yellow and green. Orange and brown, white and green. Yellow and regular brown, and yellow and green. 
and then we're going to yellow and show brown and white and green. I'm going to show you two different whites. Uh, the white and green I use over here is going to be the Makita. The one I use down here is that new Inox. Check the link below for that new Inox. I'm telling you, it's a versatile machine and you're going to love it. If you get that thing bound up in some wires, you'll be super happy because it's got a brake system in it. So, let's throw a respirator on and get down to it. Alright, starting off with that orange and regular brown. scratching up really good. Now I have our show polishing compound here and I have my yellow. Now how I tell, if I run my hand across it and it's scratchy, I know it's going to scratch stuff up. So all I do is grab my rake. I'm not going to really reef on it because if I'm reefing on it, I'm probably going to break it down more than I want. All I want to do is break that edge and get all the crusty stuff off and let it start fresh. Should put your respirator on. But I just wanted to be able to talk to you and show you at the same time. Now, if I grab it and I touch it, it feels nice and soft and fresh. That's what I'm looking for. So, now we're gonna do the show section, show brown. This is gonna cut a little longer. It's not gonna go as fast as that orange and brown. You're gonna see a lot of speed difference. I said switching over to the regular brown I'm going to wreck this buff it'll never be a show buff again um, we don't currently have any show buffs set up so throwing a little regular brown over this one just means it's gonna be a regular yellow and brown so I'm gonna cut this section here and then I'll grab it handheld and show you guys the difference in hash marks uh, up close and then we'll color each section
All right, let's grab you guys handheld here and bring you guys in close so that you guys can see it. All right, so okay, this will zoom in there. See those hash marks? That's the orange and brown. Super heavy, really, really heavy. Orange and brown, same exact process, real heavy. All right, see those hash marks? Now, this is the yellow and regular brown. See how much lighter those hash marks are? Now, you couldn't get away with this if it was sanded or if it was um, really rough. Has to be on something nice, right? Now, this one, the yellow and show brown, hash marks are even lighter yet. Now, I don't know if you guys are picking this up. It is clear as day. For those of you that have gone through my training course and we've been accelerated, and I got to show you guys the accelerated program, this is what I start showing you guys, is this is the biggest difference. So if you're an extended polisher, you've been doing it for a while, and you get into our two-day accelerated program, this is the kind of stuff we get into. Not only do we work on things that you're having issues with, but we also work on this right here. So, once again, heavy hash marks, still heavy. Now we're considerably lighter, and the lightest yet. So, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna break this down and we are going to, like I said in the past, we are going to yellow and green that first section, and then we're gonna white and green the second section, both over the top of orange and brown. And then we are going to yellow and green over the top of yellow and brown, and we are going to white and green over the show polish part. Now, I have two separate white pads, both of them one of them's for doing uh, show stuff, one of them's for doing other stuff. We have them written down, all right? So this one, yellow and green. This one, also yellow and green. This one, white and green with the Makita. And this one, white and green with that brand new Inox. I'm telling you, I love that brand new Inox. I cannot say it enough. Find that link below. Here we go. I'll just do one right after the other and save you guys the headache. Always rake out your color buff. Get that edge nice and soft. So I'm going to rake in between this one and I won't have to do it twice because it's still going to be nice and soft. I'm not going to over rouge it. But these ones, I'm going to rake them out really good before I use them.
bring you guys back handheld so you can see it. So this section here is orange and brown, yellow and green. As you can see, hash marks are quite a bit lighter, but they're still pretty significant. What you're seeing is the orange and brown underneath. The yellow and green doesn't completely take them out. Now this one, even less hash marks, it's lighter yet. Orange and brown, yellow and green, orange and brown, white and green. Now you will notice the hash marks are a little more separated out here. Give that a day to settle out and it'll actually look brighter. Right now, if we look down at it, into the fingers, it's a little clearer here. Now, we're into the yellow and brown, yellow and green. Look at how much clearer that is than that. Big time difference. I know the camera's probably not picking it up as well as it is here, but look at how light those hash marks are. Now, you get over to yellow and brown and white and green, those hash marks are really becoming very, very minimal. Now, look at the clarity in that. That's ridiculous clarity. A little less, a little less yet, and the least. But, that's still clearer. A lot of guys would be happy with that. But, for those of you that were paying attention, and stuck around all the way to the end here. Um, as you can tell, all four sections still polish. No matter what way you polish, you will get some sort of finish. And yes, they're all mirror reflection. Some have stronger hash than the other. Now, if you really wanted to, you could really break this thing down. You could orange and brown, throw a hand polish or mineral spirits or a lacquer thinner on it to clean it and then go to a yellow and brown and then clean it again and then go to a show brown and clean it and then go to like a, a show green and finish it out. Well, honestly, what are you putting out and what are you giving to your customers? That's the main question. What is it that you want to spend for time versus what you want to make for money for your business? If you're just doing this on the side and you're doing it for your own truck and you're trying to get this thing as close to perfection, sure, you should orange and brown it, clean it, yellow and brown it, clean it, yellow and show brown it, clean it, and then white and show green it. And that thing is going to look amazing when you're done. But you have to get it smooth. You have to do it and get it right. Prep is the biggest, biggest key. And if you haven't paid attention to prep, go check out my sanding video on how to sand a tank. Everything I sand is exactly the same. For those of you that have gone through my training course, I only train sanding on this tank. Why? because wheels and everything are exactly the same process. You just gotta make sure that you sand everything smooth. That's the biggest thing. So I don't need to teach everybody and waste their time and their days sanding wheels and grills and all that stuff because it all sands the same for me. So, I hope you guys found this video helpful. I hope that uh, you can start limiting your hash marks. To get it even less hash marks, if you figure out how to get this thing completely hashless, you let me know, because I've only done it a handful of times and uh, it's always going to hand work after with like a jitterbug or going to um, a cyclo machine or something like that to start softening it up. And a lot of the guys that hand polish, just hand polish for a living, uh, a lot of the high-end uh, mirrors for doing molds and stuff like that, a lot of those guys, all they do is by hand and they go all the way up to sculpture polishing. Those are completely by hand. That's how they get those things hashless. So if you're looking for hashless, I ain't got the right answer yet. Been doing this 24 years, hoping to figure it out soon. Um, but uh, once you figure it out, let me know, because I'll help. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.